<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the ebook series. And I am super happy to have Benny Holwerdo with us today. Hello, Benny. Hi. And I'm honored to be here. This is uh, quite fun. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to talk about your very lovely ebook. It's fantastic. Yay. Very nice. Uh, and Benny, where, where are you located at? Uh, I'm at the I'm in Louisville in Kentucky, so right. Uh, right in the middle of bourbon country uh, and horse country and all that good stuff. <laughs> so uh, I'm at the University of Louisville. Uh, I'm at the physics and astronomy department there, and I've been there for the last six years. Very uh, cool. And uh, now I'm a full professor there. Very cool. So has, has your uh, bourbon habit, uh, tasting habit increased? Still with me? You'd think. Yeah. No. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I haven't ridden any horses either, if that helps. Oh, okay. No, we have the Kentucky Derby there too. So, you know, yes. all very good mm -hmm. stuff. Very cool. Um, Benny, what gave you the idea to to write an ebook? Uh, did this pop out? Did, did somebody solicit it? I mean, how did you uh, the double, I, I blame the 2020 uh, Honolulu double AS. Um, <laughs> there, was a, there was a double AS and um, the AS Publishing has these lovely little notebooks, so I definitely like so gravitated over to those. Yeah, they're absolutely great. Um, and uh, I was chatting to somebody, and I was seeing all these books uh, there, and they were like, "Well, you could, you know, write something about galaxy morphology because I've noticed that you've been involved in lots of different studies that have galaxy morphology at the core." And so that yeah. sort of planted the idea, and the, the idea didn't go away. Um, but you know, I was I was in the midst of getting tenure, so I was like, you know what, this is a great post tenure project. There this will go. be my post tenure project. I have a year or so, a year and a half to go. I uh, will just finish the tenure process, and then I'll do that. Uh, so the idea was there, uh, and it sort of rattled in my head for a few months, and then of course March twenty twenty happened, and we couldn't go anywhere. Um, and so yeah, this became my pandemic at home project. Oh, very good. Yeah, uh, there, there was a couple of reasons for that because I was like, hey, I couldn't go anywhere. Uh, B, I was like, okay, I need a, I need something, I need something else. I can't just watch everything on Netflix. I need something else, uh, and I need to do something that I was, I was, I, was, I like the idea of a challenge, like a a book. I hadn't written anything of that length since my PhD, so mm -hmm. this was a like, can I even do that? Um, and so during one of these things where I was doing my run, um, I noticed that I basically came up with the chapter structure in a 30 minute run. I was like, okay, this is clearly now just taking up CPU time in my head and I just need to go get started on it. So uh, I just said yes. And uh, they came back with a, a end date and I was like, all right, let's see. Um, you have to sort of make a deal with yourself that it's like, you know what, uh, whenever the end date gets there, that's the book. I You can always keep writing the book perfection right it's always there's a next paper coming out it's like oh this would be fantastic in here and it's like you know july 1st was it and i was like you know what i remember douglas adams his editor basically said you know just give me the book just finish the sentence you're on and we'll just grab what you have um and i was like all right i'm deal with myself is i'm going to be done on july 1st awesome. that was the deal um so i also had a i set a deadline for myself to do it that was July of 2021, 2022? 2021, yeah. So it took about uh, about 15 months from yeah. when you were serious about writing it? Okay, cool. Yep. Yeah. Very good. So those of you who are interested in doing an ebook, these are sort of the time scales that these take. Um, uh, yes, but I didn't go, <laughs> progress was not linear at all. Uh, so uh, I, I sort of had this structure. So you set up the structure fairly quickly and then you go, you write the first uh, like um, sample chapter because then you sort of pick the ones like, oh, I am the most familiar with this or I can, I have stuff here. Like I know what goes in here. So that one flows quickly. And then uh, they go, okay, go ahead. Um, and then you have to do, then you're on the hook for it, right? Um, but um, so I'd made a deal with myself to sort of write a paragraph a day uh that way you know you have steady progress and i did for the for the summer and i did for the spring of 2021 because the you know thundercloud of the deadline was there but uh the fall of 2020 nothing yet yeah, completely crashed i had to teach uh under pandemic conditions and it's sort of like mm, yeah. definitely got to a slow so it's interesting to see the if I actually kept track of it, I, you know, the word count as it grows over time. But it's about a paragraph a day that I was aiming for. 
That's pretty good. That's great. That's very good. Yeah. Sort of a strategy I take with writing, you know, papers that I'm an author on is, you know, okay, paragraph or two a day and you get there. <laughs> a paragraph is half an hour. That's what I tell my students. You know, if you, you can write it up in 10 minutes and then you spend 20 minutes editing it, but it's a paragraph's half an hour. So yeah. Cool. And that is going to bring us to this very awesome ebook on galaxy morphology. Benny, take us away. Yeah. Okay, so I have to talk about the picture because <laughs> yeah, that brought please. me to Honolulu. Uh, that is the uh, Rubin Galaxy. Uh, this is uh, UGC 20, uh, 2885. Um, mm -hmm. So back in 2017, I suggested that we'd go have a look at this uh, spiral and it just looks like a fairly normal SC spiral, except that it is about five times uh, in diameter that, uh, compared to our Milky Way. And it's 10 to the 12 so it's, uh, thousand billion solar masses. So it's a massive spiral. Mm -hmm. This is the biggest spiral that we can, you know, reasonably resolve yes. uh, detail on. And so that was like, hey, this is a great um, thing. And so back in 1981, Vera Rubin wrote a paper on, hey, this thing is huge. It's on every scaling relation. So it never really stands out as strange but other than you know it's the, it's the right most point on every scaling relation so um i thought it would be cool to point hubble at it this right. was also sort of in 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 memoriam for her although they also at the same WS uh, announced that the the rubin observatory was could be called the rubin observatory so i was kind of going like okay we've named a few things after her now uh but it was uh, i thought it was a fitting tribute because we had these two papers in 1980 one of them saying hey dark matter and the other one um <clears throat> hey this galaxy's uh oddly large and so i thought it would be a cool thing to look at with hubble and you can also immediately see why well, we haven't done it before because there's this really bright star right in front of it so it does make a dramatic picture yeah. um but it does also make everybody who uh worries about their instruments immediately nervous because you know we're just pointing it at a fairly bright uh, star but anyway so this made a very dramatic picture and i was like okay now Zero thought in what kind of picture I had to go up on the front. It's like, obviously, it has to be this one. It talks right. about morphology. And, yeah. Good good shout out to Vera there. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. Okay, Galaxy Morphology. And we do have an editorial board. Ethan Vishniak is in charge of that. There are our seven corridors that we publish in. I have it right here on my shirt. There we go. <laughs> nice. so, uh, the editorial board, Steve Qualler is heading that up. We have Galaxy Morphology and a lovely shout out to one's family. Very good. Yeah, and Ron Allen is, is there. He passed uh, just before I finished the book. Uh, that was my one of my supervisors at uh, Space Telescope. Mark Holder is my dad, um, who was a particle physicist. So we uh, definitely talked shop once in a while about physics and, and how things work. Um, so yeah, these, these were great influences on me and of course you know Charlotte and Martin left me alone uh, for the writing components while they were minecrafting downstairs I mean we were sort of all cooped in up in the house so very it's cool. very nice I got everybody's help here beautiful very short okay and then we get into it into the contents so Benny take us away <clears throat> yeah so um we've been um so uh, we were talking about uh sorry we um uh, I saw the video with Chris Consolis, and uh, he also mentions that the you know we we saw galaxies as uh, resolved very quickly. If you even look at the backyard telescope, you can see uh, Rubin's galaxy and can see those spiral arms. So it's definitely uh, something that we knew was something that had structure. And so you talked about uh, what the initial structure classifications, the earliest ways were, which was sort of how science works, right? You sort of pile, put things in piles and hope that uh, underlying exactly. effects become clear. Um, and I thought, I also talk about the 90% rule. Um, there's a lot of very definite uh, statements in books. And especially in astronomy, if you say all elliptical galaxies are red, what you really mean is 90% of them or so are red. And there's maybe, a, you know, there's a minority somewhere out there, but as a rule, odds are the things are red. Uh, so that's one of those things where it's like, yeah, I thought I'd make that explicit at the beginning of the book. Uh, <clears throat> I try to have an assignment to go with it. So this is sort cool. of meant as both a monograph and something that you could use in a class. So the assignments are these 
uh, Jupyter notebooks where you uh, do a morphology uh, thing with Python. Um, and so that's that merging those or, or mating those with uh, each chapter was was a uh, was the original plan. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> of course, you know it's like uh, everything. You sort of look at it later and go like, oh, I, I have a much better idea now. But you know, at the moment, this is yeah. pretty good, uh, pretty good set of assignments. And I try to have some further references and further reading. Like um, if. There's no way that I can catch every, everything in the literature. This is a lot of studies that use different things. Um, so I try to at least put in the references and like note like, hey, this is a good paper to get started on. Great. So um, that's what it goes into the, uh, the audience that I wrote this for, which was advanced undergrads, beginning grad students, but also somebody who, I don't know, go, wants to go into it from uh, anywhere else in the AAS. I so this is a good a, a good place to start. That's what I want this book to be. Um, the way I set it up was that you see the introduction, that's sort of the history of things. And then I go down in scale effectively. So it's how do I describe the whole galaxy like profile, the, the how the light is distributed on a like galaxy wide scale. And as you can see, there's various different um, ways that people have done this but the vast majority is has the word cersic in it and so that's the profile mm -hmm. that we've typically used but um it also changes with wavelength it changes with the way you fit it the way you actually where you get it from um and so yeah that's this is all the uh that started with the vocular but has evolved over time um and it has a pretty good um the exponential profile in Freeman Law, for example, that's the kind of stuff that my uh, PhD uh, supervisor, uh, Pete from the Crowd, worked on. So yeah, that's there's a bit of a history there uh, with with photographic plates and characterizing the whole galaxy. So that was the that's how it all got started. So it actually um, starts here in chapter two. One of the things I do like about this ebook is uh, it's got a very modern feel to it, right? You've got Jupyter notebooks going on. You mentioned. Um, software packages here. Uh, there's a whole there's a whole slew, and machine learning will come later. So it's got a very modern touch to it. It's very nice. Okay, I started. I start these things with what would I like as a, as a beginning grad student to get started, so mm -hmm. I don't spend two months figuring out which package to use or something like that. Right. Um, so you know, get 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 everybody up to speed quickly. So it's written in uh, rather. As you can probably see from the uh, from this, it's written in short sections so that you can sort of jump sections a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I guess that's a sort of like software uh, sorry, software documentation, for example. So uh, yeah, I, uh, with a lot of these things, you go like, okay, Sursic fit, great. Uh, how do I do that? And there's like a bunch of different Sursic software packages. The the risk there, of course, is that I. I become obsolete quickly as soon as a new pa package arrives. Um, but they, there's a fair number of here that uh, have staying power, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and so this is how I sort of organized it. I thought that would be helpful for somebody getting started on the galaxy scale. Absolutely. Uh, and then I just sort of work, worked it on the way. It's like, well, okay, if you talk about galaxy scales, you also talk about sizes. That turned out to be a whole problem. Um, so I'm trying to actually say, okay, how do you even measure? It's a fuzzy thing. How do we measure the size of a fuzzy thing, right? It's not, it's sort of, a, uh, and so that became a, a, a chapter on its own, uh, especially there's a very good paper on the ISO mass radius. And I was like, okay, I clearly need to, put yeah. a, like when we talk about size, what are we actually talking about? Uh, and so that's, that's chapter. And then, uh, so my original, um, uh, chapter sizes or chapter distribution is like, okay, I had galaxy scale stuff, sizes of galaxy, and then it's like, what's underneath, right? Everything that's sort of a parsec scale effectively, but like smaller than the whole of the galaxies, so a component of it. And there are a lot of different ones. And um, Oof, so yeah. the vocabulary sort of comes from people looking at it from photographic plates, and they started talking about things like lenses, and then you got to, well, that's what you call a lens, but then there's also people who have gravitational lenses, and that's a very different thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I sort of go through all the possible uh, uh, components here, down to the smallest, which is star clusters. Cool. That was the uh, that was the idea. It's like you just go from the small, uh, biggest components to the smallest components, and then you've got all of them. Lopsided, this was um, 
is one of those things where it's like that's sort of galaxy wide, but it's at the outskirts. You know, the center doesn't have to have much lopsidedness, but it's another one of those things that uh, was a term for a very, very long time and then yeah. it came and went. Yes. Um, but it is something that you do come across. There, you will uh, run across. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Good. Yeah. And so this all seeks into like, hey, how do we actually do this? Visual classifications is how we got started, right? People looking at it. So that's chapter five. And it sounds like, hey, well, that's what used to happen. Um, and uh, but the um, the rest of it is a lot of that is now uh, citizen science. So uh, Chris Lintotz and his Galaxy Zoo, although I shouldn't, shouldn't say his Galaxy Zoo anymore. He just stepped down as the PI, but he did it for 15 years. So, you know, if you think of Galaxy Zoo, you think Chris Lintotz, among yeah. other people. Um, and I had, a, I think I have an example here that uh, how fast that actually goes for it. So for my um, PhD, I look for galaxies through uh, foreground galaxies, so like a big galaxy, and then look for the big one, uh, the small galaxies behind it. Um, and uh, this took me about a better part of two years to go find the little background galaxies and count them. Uh, and then we did something very similar on a very similar scale with uh, Galaxy Zoo, and it took them three weeks. It was just one of those things where you go like, it goes so much faster if you have help. And something with Galaxy Zoo, just as the economies of scale there is amazing. Indeed. So uh, that was really fun to watch. Uh, so that's one of those things that, uh, and then now we're looking for ways to actually up, up speed that up even more because we go like, look, we don't have to show them all. As soon as we have enough examples, we can have a machine take it over. over. Yes. So that's what this is from. And I thought that was, that was a paper that, that from, Tracy Beck that impressed me. Uh, I organized a workshop on galaxy morphology. I guess I've been thinking about this for a while, but yes, I organized a <laughs> workshop on this and she presented this and it was one of those like, oh, this is interesting. This is very cool. Very um, so yeah, um, so I tried to have a, a Jupyter notebook about that as well. So. Very cool, very cool. So do those Jupyter notebooks, do they hit Galaxy Zoo? Uh, there is, I think there's one about that uses Galaxy Zoo classification. So there's a, you, the, the, the voting, the calibrated voting uh, is the data is available uh, on the Galaxy Zoo uh, website. So you can just use that as a, and I thought using that as an example is good. good. So here's a word that I'm <clears throat> trying to make happen. Uh, Galaxy morphometrics. Morphometrics is a word that I stole from biology, um, which is, I think is something that I say here, but um, I know Chris came up with this concentration asymmetry smoothness or clumpiness, depending on the iteration, but it's CAS. And then GNM20 was sort of like the uh, the other way to uh, boil that um, very subjective, very uh, hard to quantify thing that galaxy morphology, like all the spiral alarms, the, the amount of fluffiness, all that stuff. You're trying yeah. to boil that down to a couple of numbers. And so that's what galaxy morphometrics is. Yeah. Uh, and so you try to do the same thing with fish, for example, or deer, if you're a hunter. It's like the kind of thing like, it's a, I don't know what a 10 point buck is, but I know yeah. that, you know, it has a number. So I think it's the height or something. But anyway, it's just- um, you have to do with there's the number of points on the, on the horns or something. No idea, but we've tried to take something that has a very qualitative um, and uh, subjective uh, component to it and turn it into a number, right? And that's what morphometrics are about. So, um, and so biology has the same thing where, uh, you know, you measure a couple of me uh, uh, things to, to indicate whether or not a population of animals is doing better or worse. Uh, and so, yeah, morphometrics is sort of a similar thing. We've tried to get, there's, there's different, um, uh, authors with different techniques that turn this complicated morphology into a few numbers. And the whole idea is that we want to have an orthogonal space. So a good, uh, um, as much as you can independent space to then classify things in like Hubble types or mergers. Uh, Chris did a lot of merger work. Uh, and so these are, it's like, okay, here's everything that I know of. Um, so here's all of them. Uh, that was my test out uh, chapter. So that's the first one I, uh, uh, I wrote. Uh, uh, but I thought it was interesting. It's like how you turn, you know, something as complicated as a morphology, like the galaxy morphology is literally all of its uh, history. Uh, it, it results in how it looks now, right? It's sort of like all the scars and all the growth, like that's what it looks like, <laughs> like now. So its entire history is sort of encoded in it, but then how? Uh, and so that's what we're trying to do with these kind of things. Cool. Nice. Uh, speaking of scars, we get to low surface brightness, which is the um, 
uh, part that also worked in, uh, I worked in XUV discs, so uh, the, the star formation in the very outer discs, uh, and stellar streams and stellar halos with the ghost project. And so that's the kind of thing that low surface brightness is what we're going to do a lot of because the time scales in the outer parts of galaxies is the longest, so we actually get the uh, most fossil record of what happened to it. So this is kind of the, you can get some history from it in the low surface brightness component and like see the whole thing that formed in the high surface brightness, for example. Um, and so I, I think this is going to be extremely exciting because we have, uh, of course, the Rubin Observatory going to happen, lots of low surface brightness work, um, it, but also things like Euclid and the Ro uh, Roman Observatory are going to do uh, stellar star counts in nearby galaxies. So you can actually get the uh, stellar halo and its components uh, that way. So there's a lot that's going to happen here, and I think uh, we haven't seen the last of that yet. So that's probably a chapter that I'll you know, have to update massively if Ruben gets going. Um, we'll come back to that. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of you know, time scales and kinematics, um, a lot of the kinematic components uh, uh, have their equivalent to in, in morphological components. So for example, if you have a resonance, you end up with a ring. If you have, uh, well, exa how exactly spiral arms work is still um, a little bit up to debate, but uh, it's interesting to see that you can actually watch the wake of a spiral arm in the stellar population. You can see things like the, the um, angular momentum, for example, and it's with relation to morphology. Like so, the kinematics and the morphology are um, very closely related. And I thought, you know, that yeah. that's another chapter's worth. Okay. Yeah. Um, we always think of galaxy morphology as something that happened to the optical because we're very an op very optical species. So, uh, and and that's a bias that all astronomers have to some degree. Um, we like to look at it, and so that's most of the morphology stuff you've seen so far was basically um, I can see it, but uh, you see it, you have different morphology in H one. So that's the twenty one centimeter atomic hydrogen. Uh, you have different morphologies in. Uh, so millimeter, ultraviolet, X-ray. So you have these different um, phenomena that only happen in particular uh, at particular wavelengths. So I thought that would be a good sort of catch-all, uh, but we still fit Sersic profiles to everything, um, or morphometrics for that matter. And so the uh, the application of the optical thing techniques that we use end up being used on other wavelengths as well. But it's very much we I started optically and then sort of spread out. Um, and I think this is another one where you see Allman pause, for example, well, there could now be a couple of JWST projects there that, um, especially with Miri, um, yes. now we have the detail of the ISM and, you know, all, all of, or it's glorious detail, uh, the PA, PAHs, like you can see all the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, holes in the, um, it's a very different kind of morphology. So how do you even uh, talk about that? So that's another one. It's like, yeah, JWST is currently massively writing book there. Um, and then, you know, morphology evolution. So this is really where I was like, okay, I got to stay away from Chris's book, but I can't not talk about it either. Right. Um, and so this is sort of my approach to how you would do these things. Uh, anything from like how to cook, uh, how morphology, uh, the same galaxy looks different in different wavelengths as you shift it to higher redshift, but also can we see any kind of evolution? Like, do we see more ellipticals? Do we see more spirals? Uh, where are they? Um, and so that's something that I wanted to put in there. Um, and as, of course, you know, this is really where JWC is starting to, to rewrite the book. Uh, we have, like, for instance, um, I was involved in a study that is uh, uh, looking at bars in Sears. The Sears collaboration is uh, mm -hmm. uh, is one of them. And so it's interesting to watch that these bo uh, bars are much higher redshifts than I would have, you know, put money down on. So this is, uh, yeah. uh, that's kind of fun. And a, and a lot of different things as well. I mean, just... Um, yeah. The fact that we see uh, globular clusters at redshift one and a half. It's like, yeah, yeah. I've not predicted that one, but there it is. So yeah, that's a um, that's a really neat uh, thing, like the discovery part. So I think mm -hmm. this is another chapter that I'll have like another half, thanks to JWST already in the first few years. Uh, so yeah, the future outlook is like, hey, this is what's going to happen. Um, funny, I didn't put JWST in there because it was coming out basically when JWST was being launched. So I was kind of like, is this still the future? 
um it's it's good you know by the time anyone reads this it's going to be the now it is so uh <laughs> mm. Uh, but Rubin, the Vera uh, Rubin Observatory, uh, is going to uh, definitely add a whole bunch of low surface brightness. Uh, Euclid and Roman, uh, complementary, but uh, very um, interesting uh, near infrared morphology. So very curious it's going to come out there. Um, and then, yeah, I was involved with uh, a radio observatory in South Africa. And so uh, Meerkat and the uh, square kilometer array, which is going to get built there, we're right. going to see um, radio continuum and uh, atomic hydrogen morphologies for a lot of galaxies. Very here. cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and then, yes, like you mentioned, machine learning. Uh, this is sort of something that I, uh, by the time I got to the end of the book, I was like, I can't avoid this. Um, so there are a bunch of different things that people work on. I was trying to learn this myself. I'm still trying to learn this myself. Um, so the morphometrics is sort of a uh, good feature space to start learning on. So you can do very um, computationally cheap uh, machine learning. And so you can do pretty well. Uh, usually that's already like, well, this is good enough. If you need this to be 80% accurate, you know, good enough. Uh, but then you very quickly move into something like convolutional neural networks and, you know, much yep. more complicated stuff. And yep. so I sort of go all over them because we've been, uh, galaxy morphology was one of the first sort of Kaggle challenges uh, for people to do this, right? So they're like, okay, there's all these different ways to approach this. Um, yeah, so the more machine learning on morphometrics, uh, I got a kick out of the term eigen galaxies. I had to get, make that come by. So it's like eigen <laughs> vectors, you know, it's like... What's an orthogonal, orthogonal space? Orthogonal space. <laughs> orthogonal space. So we're still hunting an orthogonal space, or you just sort of throw your arms up and go like, you know what? We'll just go with what we've got. Um, but it's interesting to see that what people taking different approaches for different uh, morphological problems. So things like how do I generate the profiles or the morphometrics very quickly, or is it something where you're trying to identify something really unique, uh, something that uh, Galaxy Zoo has been like superb at, right? People are much better at identifying, well, this is odd. Uh, and then, uh, so the Honey's Forebear, for example, and like, but also a lot of other examples, um, yeah, people still beat machines. Um, so it's probably going to be a um, sort of a wedding between the two where we use people to find the weird stuff and uh, and just help machines and classify the rest. So yeah, that's uh, that, was, that was sort of it. Uh, but like I said, I, I gave myself a deadline because um, I swear, you know, the week after and the week after that, I saw a all these interesting papers and awesome plots that I totally wanted to put in there, but really? I'm done. <laughs> like, okay, this is it. So it was a fun, uh, fun and fun project. Very cool. This is an awesome. It awesome. is. It is. It might be. Uh, it might be a uh, e-publication, but you know, there is something to be said when you get this in the mail. Oh, uh, very cool. <laughs> so very and cool. I got to send one to my mom. So that was nice. Oh, I'm going to have you put that up in a minute here a second. Okay. Very good again. Awesome. Benny, thank you so much for walking us through this very lovely ebook. Very nice. Uh, and let's get another shot of the actual physical hard copy. Show that up. Yes. Yeah, so you, you get you get your author copy. I, I mean, I have my author copies with my PhD. That was the other, you know, 400 page thing that I wrote. And um, and I was like, okay, I need to, I, I thought it would be a cool, cool challenge. Uh, and it was, it was remarkably fun to do. Um, I thought at some point I would hate it uh, and I didn't, uh, but also because I, you know, had an end date and I was like, okay, I'm going to be done July. I can just sit around and not think about the book for a while, but um, yeah, it was quite, quite fun to do. Cool. So you mentioned it a couple of times. So now I'm really curious. Um, uh, you know, where, where do we go from here, given given the published ebook? You hinted us several times that maybe there might be a Galaxy Morphology 2. Uh, you, second edition, you, yes. You start putting in the JWST and the Rubin stuff when it starts coming up, Meerkat, et cetera. And so do you anticipate at this point uh, a Galaxy Morphology 2, or we've had enough for a while? <laughs> Probably. Um, I'm, I'm a little worried that, you know, as soon as you look at your own work and you, you kind of cringe you're like oh my god what did i do here but um i i'm okay with uh with with jumping in and adding all the new jwst stuff and like yeah the ruben uh so i'm trying to um and euclid euclid's launched 
Uh, I just saw that I said that uh, Roman was going to be launched in 2030. It's like, that's not the case. It's a lot closer. Uh, so the future is here. And, uh, and I also have more thoughts about the galaxy morphology classification with machine learning. So it's like, maybe I'll just do a whole general spruce up in a few years. Yeah. And of course, by the time you wrote the book, uh, you know, uh, chat GPT and other assorted um, technologies like that have come out and how those may be able to uh, impact some of this will be interesting. I, so the more I talk to my colleagues who work, who use uh, AI, well, machine learning for various things, right. uh, the more nuanced, it's a technique, it's a tool, I, it can do things, some things really well, it can other, um, other things not really as close as well, uh, so it is always something to check, and actually I've had fun, because I'm more of a, um, I'm more of a classical astronomer, uh, so machine learning, learning that is, is, is interesting, um, but, uh, for example, I had a colleague, uh, John Wu, he, um, had a fantastic, uh, uh, catalog for low, uh, sorry, nearby low surface brightness galaxies identified with machine learning. So I was like, okay, great. Oh, wait, uh, I know of a catalog with spectroscopy, which, I, uh, so from gamma. So I just compared the two. So I did classical astrophysics on a machine learning sample, right? So these things sort of play off each other. It's really fun to watch that. So, yeah. um. Yeah, I think uh, there might be some more uh, coming into this book. I mean, the Sears team alone has put out something like, I don't know, 80 papers at this point. It's uh, it's, yeah. it's been a massively productive. And, uh, well, we've all sort of ogled the JWST data uh, right. as it came in. It was just amazing. So, um, yeah, you can see the amount of detail. Um, overlapping galaxies is a thing that I'm like working on uh, to oh yes 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 to yes. Uh, to see the dust uh, in the fore foreground and so we've been doing that with Data Um so I think there's a lot of interesting stuff to come uh, yeah you have uh, several um, nicely cited articles on overlapping galaxies so yes that was fun working with Bill Keel who originally came up with that so I did a little bit of homework there so very good ah, okay <laughs> nice very cool Ben, I want to thank you so much for spending some time and walking us through your very lovely ebook. Go grab a copy, people. It's very good. And that will do. And I hope this made your astronomy day just a little bit better. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.